Hello. Hello, Darren. Um, can you please uh, start by introducing yourself? Sure. My name is Darren Klein. I live in Los Angeles, California, and I uh, produce, organize, and collect artist publications, zines, uh, and ephemera. Uh -huh. And so your publication, uh, you're publishing them under the name uh, Darren Klein's and Friends? Sure. Darren Klein and Friends uh, is actually covers uh, a lot of different things that I do, including um, arts programming, exhibitions, and artist publications. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it also produces uh, the boxes of books. Yes, so uh, Darren Klein and Friends was actually first ever printed uh, or in print for the Box of Books project. And that came about because uh, A.A. Bronson invited me to participate in Printed Matters New York Art Book Fair. Uh, it was somehow I missed the first year. I didn't know about it, I didn't hear about it, I didn't participate or go. Um, but uh, for the second year, AA invited me to participate and I went to New York with a suitcase full of my own publications and uh, a variety of publications that uh, different people that I know, my friends, had made. And I noticed that at my table, uh, visitors to the fair would be really intrigued by all of the different things that I had at my table, but the fair itself was so, um, there's so much going on at the fair, there's so many exhibitors, there's, there's so much to see, and I think that having a lot of stuff at my table was um, maybe uh, confusing or overwhelming because I had scenes by Christopher Russell and Eve Fowler, whose work we see behind me here. Uh, I had work by several different people and they were different sizes and different prices. So I noticed that people were saying like, oh, well, how much is this one? And, oh, this one's three, this one's 12, this one's eight, this one's five, like, how much is that? And then they were just kind of like, oh, thanks, I'll see you later. But I could tell that they were really into the material. They just, uh, it, it wasn't maybe inviting to have so many different choices. So I came back to Los Angeles and immediately started working on Box of Books, the first volume of Box of Books, which the intent was to have all of the variety that I had at my table, but uh, you wouldn't have to make up your mind if you were interested in any of the work at the table because you would get it all in one box. So uh, it was uh, 20, 20 different artists made uh, books for, for the project and I boxed them up in an edition of 100 and I called it Darren Klein and Friends Present Box of Books. Okay, so there's one box a year with 20 artists each time and it's always the same format. Correct, so it's a box a year and it's usually about 20 books. Sometimes there's more artists involved because there might be uh, collaborative duos mm -hmm. or something. Um, I invite about 25 people to participate um, 23 will say yes, 22 will say no. Mm. I'm just throwing out some figures here. And then in the end, it usually ends up being around 20 uh, books in the box. And, um, and then what was the other question? Uh, are they really books? Oh, right. So the format. They are, uh, I've been searching for the technical term for the format of these books. It's a single piece of paper. Uh, folded in quarters and then unfolded and cut in a certain way that you can actually do a kind of an origami trick to make it into a single, into a book with pages that turn. So but then, this fold has a name? I've been looking for it, I've been trying to find it and different pe people call it different things. Mm -hmm. Actually somebody this year at Printed Matters LA Art Book Fair 2016 called it um, Maze Fold. So it's kind of like a maze I could see, I could see how that would, yeah. that would kind of cover it. Um, if any of our uh, listeners have any have a, have a better or an actual name for it, I'll be interested to hear. But it's just one piece of paper that stays more or less intact, but it's folded down. And then um, the artists have the option, and they generally tend to use it, of putting something on the back of the paper. So you, you, you see the cover and the back mm -hmm. cover, and then the pages, then you can unfold it, and there's uh, something on the other side. Mm -hmm. And um, so why did you choose to um, publish this kind of, uh, you call them books, when they could easily be considered as zines? Oh yeah, so uh, I call it Box of Books just because it had like a nice onomatopoeic ring to it. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I, I actually have a fairly mercurial um, definition of, of all different kinds of publications. Uh, sometimes I call them zines, sometimes I call them books, sometimes I call them artist books, and it kind of um, bounces around and kind of depends on uh, on outside of this project. When I'm, when I'm evaluating it, it kind of depends on the material and the spirit of it. Um, but as an overarching term, I, I guess I would call most of, or all of the work in Box of Books, zines. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And why do you do that, Darren? Why do I do Box of Books? I'm compelled, I can't stop. I, uh, I really love being the organizer and um, I really love um, gathering people together. There's a kind of an educational process where I'm w walking people through the process of actually learning how to make this, um, mm -hmm. this format of publication. Um, so that's uh, rewarding. And then um, not just box of books, but in general, I would say that many publication pro uh, projects that I work on are kind of, maybe in the beginning they started out as, I viewed them as kind of interim projects between actual exhibitions that you might find in, in physical, you know, gallery type spaces, um, which take, you know, that take up physical space and you have to have uh, a lot of resources to do that. So um, I found that doing artist publications was a kind of affordable and more immediate version of kind of curating or, or organizing an art show, for example. Um, so yeah, I would say a lot of the work that I do is I approach it in the same way as if I'm um, organizing an exhibition. There's a kind of a conceptual thread, there's um, there's, uh, you know, aesthetic concerns, mm -hmm. there's uh, oftentimes, not for box of books, but oftentimes there's like um, thematic um, intent. So uh, yeah, so in a way, I would say to kind of keep active between exhibitions, but then mm -hmm. as it turned out, it's so fun and delightful and rewarding to do it that now, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of the times I'll just conceive of an idea just just to make a book out of it. Mm -hmm. And um, so you you call it Darren Klein's and friend, and so that might answer my question. How how do you choose all, all the all these people? Yeah, so I would say ninety nine percent of the people I work with I know mm -hmm. personally. Um, which must mean that I know a lot of people. Also. <laughs> because <laughs> because uh, this, there's nine volumes of Box of Books, for example, and a few artists have done it more than once, but um, usually every year it's all new artists. Mm -hmm. um, so it's fairly rare for me to reach out to someone that I don't know uh, to ask them to participate, mm -hmm. but I do, I have occasionally. And then every once in a while, uh, I'll meet someone who who proposes that mm -hmm. they would participate, and mm -hmm. and and both things have worked out quite well. But um, I just know so many creative people. I don't see, I don't feel like I'm ever at a at a mm -hmm. shortage of, of people to involve. And maybe it's also important that it's people that um, you go along well with. Yeah, definitely. So. Um, like-minded. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And in fact, um, it, it happens that people that I ask to participate in box of books are not even artists. Sometimes I'm just, for example, I have a really good friend who is, tells hilarious stories. And after a while of hearing all of these really hilarious and fascinating stories about horrible jobs that he had, I kind of was like, hey, you should be in box of books. You should write out you know, some stories about these crazy jobs you've had. You're such a funny storyteller, teller, and you know, you may not consider yourself a writer, but just type them out. It's not, we're not critiquing you on your style. Mm -hmm. The stories are like, are, you know, hold their own weight. So there have been occasions where, yeah, there's people that I get involved that just, they're people that I know they're not even really involved in uh, creative work. So I kind of drag them in, <laughs> recognize their talent and bring them in. Yeah. That's also what zines are about. Yeah. And um, and what about your... So is Box of Books your whole uh, publishing activities or do you publish other things? I have published well over 100 um, different titles and projects, maybe wow. even 150. 
Mm. Yeah, I had an exhibition, I think in 2010, that was curated yeah. by Margaret Tedesco, uh, who runs Second Floor Projects in San Francisco, where everything that I had published to that date was was on view, um, and I just keep doing it. I do, I do, I do several a year, actually. Um, they're all listed on my website. <laughs> yeah, and so they're more like a one time, one shot project. Yeah, there's only um, the only series I've ever produced was I did um, is Box of Books, which mm -hmm. there's nine volumes of at this point, and then I did um, a series called Twenty First Century Queer Artists Identify Themselves, and that was a really fun publication because anyone who sent me. 150 physical copies um, of their artwork designed or represented in any way they wanted on a piece of page. Then I collated them and stapled them together. And uh, those were people from around the world sent me their pages and I collated them and there's five issues of that. 21st century queer artists identify themselves. And do you produce also like uh, an artist friend of yours would talk, tell you about one idea and you would, you would produce uh, his zine? Generally, no. I think everything that I've produced has been, um, has been, I came up with an idea, just mm -hmm. an idea was in my head and I went out and looked for um, material. And it's or always content. more collective. Than yes, a, yes. A There's, device. yeah, yeah. Even, even for example, um, uh yeah there, there yeah there's usually multiple people involved mm -hmm. and how did you came to uh, across zine for the, uh, zines for the first time for the first time well i i made the first one that i ever saw mm -hmm. so i didn't know that they existed and i guess it was kind of like part of the reason i have such trouble putting my finger on like what's a zine what's an artist publication what's a book is because the 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 materials and the energy and the spirit and things that that go into things can steer them more into one category or another but then so many things could be more than one of those categories and so the first zine i ever made was really kind of like a literary journal mm -hmm. um, but i made it in high school and i got poetry and photography and writings from my friends in high school and I knew a bunch of older kids that were out of high school so some of some like older cool kids um, and uh, it was so it was, um, it was photocopied but the uh, but it had like a fold it had fold outs so there was like photography fold outs and the I hand watercolored all of the covers like abstract watercolors and it was bound with twine so in that way it was the first I didn't I had never seen anything like that before I'm from a really small town mm -hmm. um, and so then after I made that um, then I went to San Francisco and went to City Lights and there's a little room under the stairs at City Lights where the that's the consignment section and they have everything in the consignment section from handmade artist books to commercially printed stuff, but it's, stuff, it's works that do not have a distributor. So you would have to actually talk to the consignment person at City Lights Books and say, would you carry my book and you do some paperwork. So then I found a whole, it's not, I wouldn't call it a room, it's like under the stairs, but like I found a whole niche of this niche market uh, publications and I was totally blown away. I thought, oh my God, I'm not the only person that ever did this and then that totally sealed the deal I just never stopped yeah <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so is there a specific aspect of zines uh, or no I have another more interesting question <laughs> so would you say that because uh, you you didn't know at all about self-publishing and about zines would you say that there's something, uh, something of an organic way that this first publication was created? That anybody yeah. without the culture, uh, yeah, I think could actually, produce that? yeah, and it was it's a combination of that for sure, mixed with, I mean, the real impetus for making a zine was, or making a publication was, um, I was really I hated high school. I was so, I just didn't like school and I was awkward and gay and out of place in this small town and um, so I I wanted to drop out of high school and my guidance counselor convinced me to 
to take some basic courses at my high school and then go to a vacation a vocational school for to learn a skill. Mm -hmm. So I took graphic design in this um, vocational high school. But like computers barely existed at that time. Mm -hmm. This is in 1989. Uh, had never like used or looked at a computer. There were no computers in the graphic design class. It was all, um, all you know, basically like analog design mm -hmm. process. Um, and the and one of the projects was each person had to design a page that would that for a book. So each student had to design a page mm -hmm. that then would then become a book. And I was like, oh, um, you know, a book that that you wouldn't buy at the store. So that really sparked my imagination. Mm. Yeah. And, and so that leads to my other question. So would you say that your way of making zines has to do with uh, um, counterculture or react uh, reaction to, to established culture um, or also to sub uh, subcultures? Yes, uh, I mean definitely. I would say that I, I guess when I realized that other people were doing it, I, I considered myself a part of that dialogue of the, mm -hmm. of the counterculture because I knew that things that I was interested in, my, my, in, my imagination was sparked so much by finding this room under the stairs at City Lights um, that I knew that I had become a part of something, un even unknowing and that I just felt right at home there. I, I was so excited by, for example, the price point of the publications being like two or three or five or ten dollars, um, as opposed to like a commercially printed book that you would buy on the shelves just in the next room. Um, and I knew that the spirit of the content of, of those kinds of publications was very unlikely to be found from actually quite a bit of knowledge because I love books, um, uh, regular books. Uh, I knew that it was just something completely different. So yeah, definitely the, the countercultural aspect and the, the idea of difference and, and different ideas and kind of the freedom to express just from the most intellectual to the most absurd to the most sexual to the most uh, political work uh, that no one could tell you not to and you wouldn't, wait, you wouldn't have to wait for a publisher to, a, to accept you or agree with you. So definitely that's the part of the a part of the thing and and a lot has changed in commercial publishing over the years but i say that you still that i'm still attracted to what's being produced independently mm -hmm. what's the question that i haven't asked you question that you haven't asked me uh <laughs> that's important in your work that maybe i haven't seen yet the important thing about my work is uh that I, I treat them like artworks. I, I produce them like artworks with the care and the passion of an artwork. Um, I, I, I like for people to know that they're handmade. I, I, would, I, would, I would hate for someone to mistake something that I made for something that was commercially printed or widely distributed. Um, I just love, I don't think that they're precious, but I like the, the, um, the underground quality to them. Um, and I think that that um, that I'm that I uh, even though I'm not creating content now for for these, there was a time when I created all the content for my publications, and I just very organically over the course of several years moved to just organizing and curating and 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 producing. Uh, but it's um, if you look at a publication that I produced, and there's 15 people involved with it from the graphic designer to the writer to the photographer, whoever, you know, whoever's involved, um, it's still, uh, I'm still saying, um, I'm still saying you could get to know me personally if you engage with my publications. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Darren. Thanks, Antoine.